Welcome all to this tutorial. Today we're going to go ahead and do some character filtering. So you might have noticed that I have changed the code to a uh, pretty good extent. First off are the break statements that I have inserted pretty much everywhere at the end of each check. So if the check succeeds, don't go any further. Also, uh, to the, that's done. Excellent. So in the else part, we have this switch statement and for all these characters you see for a parentheses because how do you how do you type in a parentheses well you open up your text editor and i suppose on my keyboard it's shift 0 and that's a parentheses and if i want to well Wait, let's open a parentheses, that's shift 9, and to close the parentheses, that would be shift 0. What did I do here then? Uh, ASCII is for, uh, this is the ASCII code for 0, 48. You can see that here. Uh, where is it? There we go. So 48 is the ASCII code for 0, simple as that. And I have placed it here. So when I press a zero, depending on whether shift is pressed or not, I will either print, I will either record a parentheses or I will record a zero. So this, with this function, I will verify, I will check whether the shift is being pressed or not. So if it's being pressed and zero is being pressed along with it, then this will happen. If, if it's not, then I will just write 0 and that's it. No big deal. Now, if this evaluates the true, I don't want you to go checking any other cases out. I don't care. I have inserted a break statement, so exit the loop immediately. Next up, 49, which was for 1. Now, notice instead of a 0, I could have also placed uh, either... I, well. Let me put it to you this way. I could have placed key, and that would mean that I have basically that that would have the same functionality. But instead, I like to place a zero primarily because I can orientate myself easier within the confines of my own code. Why? Well, you know, when you're reading through it, if you have just right key, right key, right key, right key, you don't really know. You have this and then right key below. You don't know what is this key below going to be. Like this, you do. So that's the that's how I made them from one to from basically zero to nine. So you have zero and then you have one. So notice that this is the keyboard layout that I am using. But even if you have a wrong keyboard layout and if it's recording wrong uh, wrong things, for example, but in this sense. So on number one, how many options do you think you have? Well, let's see. I can press one and then I can press shift and one and that gives me an exclamation mark. One is going to be the same for every keyboard. Shift will be perhaps different, for, shift one will perhaps be different for some other keyboards, but there are only a couple of possible combinations. Well, a couple of combinations that are most likely to be used, maybe like two or three, and that's it. So you still have a good amount of the password. I mean, you have the you have the large enough segment of the password that you can pretty much guess it out of one or two tries, basically. Anyway, let's go ahead and delete this. Let's keep on moving forward. I have inserted that for every one of these. So you see, uh, this is a backslash uh, two. And I have this pound. Uh, that's for that's on three dollars on four. I do believe that seven is a slash. So let's see, six is a carrot, five is a percent percent sign. Uh, apparently, no seven is uh, seven is and percent sign. Let's check that out. Indeed, it is. Okay, so on my keyboard, it is. And then we go down further, asterisk and the parentheses and the open parentheses on nine, and so on and so forth. So I have inserted a good amount of these. Make sure that you insert them in accordance. You can either copy mine or you can insert them in accordance with your own keyboard layout. But basically, what we're doing here is checking whether the shift is pressed. If shift is not pressed, 
uh, go ahead and just write the, write the number corresponding to the ASCII or write the character corresponding to the ASCII but if shift is pressed in combination with this uh, then write something else whatever the result of that might be for me it's a write parentheses so to say and for you it might be something else but hey feel free to follow it through and see what you get if not I mean literally literally just go onto your keyboard take it in your hands take a look at it press shift press 1 and see which character you get and then put it in here that's all you need to do in order to get the characters from 0 to, uh, to 9 very easy no no big deal uh, they will get recorded they will get printed out so uh, now that we have all of them uh, let's go ahead and verify that this is indeed correct how do we do that well just go ahead and compile it and uh, wait for it excellent so it is up and running okay I have a lot of these things that I've tested out here to make sure that the keys do work we will be adding more of these in the follow-up tutorial so feel f if you wish to skip that feel free if you want to add your custom keys that you wish to add uh, go ahead and do it f that correspond to some keyboards that you might want but these these ones generally will fit uh, a lot of keyboards I myself am using a UK keyboard but a lot of these keys are very similar for the US keyboard as well so just take a look at your keyboard layout and then change it or change it to your target environments uh, keyboard sets if you're uncertain you can always go with the US keyboard a lot of people most people tend to use that one well, I don't know, uh, in the Americas and Europe, people tend to use it, but I don't know elsewhere in the world. I'm not sure how, what the layout, what the, what is the preferred layout. Anyway, so let's go ahead and start typing. So let's first verify that we have all the numbers in place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. And let's go ahead and open it. Uh, this could be from the previous ones. Let's or I could have pressed it, I probably did press it but to be on the safe side to know for sure that it works, let's go ahead and delete it save the file while it's running and repeat the process 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0 okay so it is recording numbers without any problems now let us go ahead and see if it's recording the symbols Okay. And there you go. We are also recording uh, the symbols. I can put it here, like one underneath the other, so it's easier to match them up. Uh, so if somebody's using, you know, these things and their passwords or something of a kind, then you are able to easily track them. But you know, usually they won't. Ninety percent of the time, eighty to ninety percent of the time, people just use uh, upper and lowercase letters to for this purpose and the upper and lowercase letters of course still work A B C and A B C so we will add a few other functionalities and a few other filters for the keys but hey uh, you know if you have some filters that you would like to implement or that you have implemented for the keys feel free to post them in the discussions I'll be happy to take a look at them and uh, perhaps we can implement them in the whole project uh, if we so choose so you can see I have numbers from, one, from 0 to 9, I have these characters and I have upper and lowercase letters so this is about this is the composition of about 90% of passwords out there in the world so we of course need some other characters here as well once we have them that's gonna pretty much be any possible combination that somebody might type into their uh, keyboard uh, will be our keylogger will be able to record it and put it into a file and then later on hopefully send it so once again uh, if you feel kind of bored uh, listening to me just putting in uh, key filters because that's completely up to you what sort of key filters would you like to put in uh, you can feel free to skip that part and go into the part where we will uh, make our keylogger just to a few examples for the functionalities that I had in mind to take snapshots and to use the cameras to use the onboard camera or to 
no, just send an email or something of a kind. Anyway, that would be it for this tutorial. Please make sure that you have these filters set up and running, that you have uppercase and lowercase letters set up and running, because we are going to need all of this for the follow-up tutorials. Until then, I bid you all farewell.